Good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar entitled Challenges with Your ERP, Use Delmere or TIMS. Uh, today's speakers include myself, Patrick Pollock of the Delmere um, brand in business development. I'm joined by my colleague, Moss Rosen, the Delmere Senior Solution Consultant for ORTIMS. I'm ready to get started here. Uh, just to note one other thing, we did have a poll uh, at the beginning about the use of planning and scheduling. Um, uh, it was a pretty close poll, but ERP seemed to win it out. Uh, the Excel and manual uh, tools weren't so far behind. Um, I'm going to uh, now go into the Dassault system um, kind of uh, ecosystem uh, with the uh, Dassault system based as a scientific company. We have over 15,000 uh, employees, over 200,000 enterprise customers. Um, Dassault system as a 3D experience company uh, is uh, is headquartered in Paris, France, with over uh, 179 uh, worldwide offices. Um, our mission statement is to provide business and people with 3D experience universes to imagine sustainable innovations capable of harmonizing product, nature, and life. Um, if we move to the next slide, it explains the 3D uh, experience compass. Um, the 3D experience platform is a business experience platform. Uh, it provides solutions uh, for every organization in your company from marketing to sales to engineering uh, that can help you in your value creation process, differentiating consumer uh, experiences. I'm going to actually explain here the 3D compass briefly. On the west quadrant, uh, we have the, the 3D symbol uh, represents CAD or designer applications such as Katia or SolidWorks. On the north side, we have the uh, SWIM uh, symbol uh, represent, representing collaboration for a product lifecycle management and no being prominent there. Uh, on the east side of the quadrant, uh, we have information intelligence applications uh, symbolized by the six W tags. And on the south quadrant, we have the V plus R symbol, which represents uh, virtual and real uh, simulation applications. And that's where in the uh, Delmia brand sits. If we uh, move to the next slide, um, it explains the, uh, the Delmir um, brand in more depth. Um, Dassault System positions uh, the Delmir brand as the provider for glo global industrial operations, uh, delivering digital continuity across virtual and real worlds of manufacturing. Briefly, I'll talk about the main uh, capabilities of, of Delmir. Um, uh, digital manufacturing um, is displayed there, and that includes uh, process planning, 3D simulation, ergonomics, robotics, virtual build, uh, Apriso, which is the Manufacturing Operations Management, MES. Um, and then what we're talking about today, which is the Delmia Ortem suite for supply chain uh, and manufacturing planning and scheduling. Um, and I am now going to uh, turn over the, uh, the, the slideshow to my colleague, Moss, who is the Delmia Ortem's expert. Moss, it's now your turn. You have the floor. Yes, thank you all for joining us today. What we'll be talking about in the next few minutes was, is talking about boosting your ERP and how we can use collaborative and integrated planning solutions to help boost your, your production. From a digital transformation perspective, we're, we're talking a lot about digital continuity these days and how we can bring all of these various systems together in one coherent system. From a planning and scheduling perspective, back in the 20th century, we were talking about uh, planning boards, magnets, um, all types of different ways to do in our planning, more of a manual perspective. As we started to grow up, we were, were learning that MRP is also another very good tool to use, and that's related to more of our push manufacturing, but, but still a very static tool. Then in the early 20th century, we started to get into better tools like Excel, but still in a very non-collaborative approach, but leaning us uh, towards our lean manufacturing approaches and being able to produce the best we can. But nowadays, we're really focusing in on agile manufacturing and the ability to build products very quickly, but with um, configurability and kind of building a product of one. So the ability to be able to configure and modify our products in our production um, very quickly in a more agile approach is where we're looking to go and being more collaborative, of course. From plant planning and scheduling, the things that uh, we're hearing and the things that we must have are, are things around the world that ha have been changing. We have multiple plants. M many of our customers use multiple plants. They have a lot of customer service and a lot of customer issues and things that need to be addressed very quickly. 
There's a lot of mass production as well, but we're also talking about customized and customization, uh, more um, of on-demand manufacturing. But we need to remain agile. Many of our customers are looking at uh, on-time deliveries and, and trying to reduce any penalties there might be for um, delayed deliveries. We need to react much faster. Also, cost is a, a much bigger impact these days. So we have a better approach versus those manual tools and other tools we saw previously. What we're doing is we're looking at a more dynamic approach, more real time. So we have a, an advanced planning and scheduling system that is more centric to what you would need. So the ability to have a very dynamic approach, have an automated tool, being very collaborative and having an easy UI is another key thing. But also optimization engines are going to be something that we are concerned about because we as humans, we aren't able to optimize the best that we could, whereas the computer can do all the right things for us based on the various inputs and constraints that are in the system. We also look at things from a sequencing and scheduling perspective. So we have kind of two sides here where we look at um, the scheduling and rescheduling and optimization, but also looking at more of our capacity and load leveling and being able to do what if scenarios to, to determine whether we have the best fitted approach and best fitted plan. What we've noticed and heard from our customers is many of them are still using Excel and that's a you know, great tool, but it's not as collaborative as we would, we would hope for. And we still see that 20% of our customers are not truly integrated with their ERP, that these systems stand alone um, and have really no impact on ERP or even your MRP systems. And then finally, we're seeing that there's still a lot of planning being done within the ERP, which is a great way to go, but the ERP sometimes is missing information that would really get us to a better or more finite schedule. From this term, then, we're, we're talking about integrations and interfaces with other systems. A very important thing is to be able to share that information, the planning and scheduling, uh, with other users in the, the community, as well as get information from your other systems, like your ERP or your manufacturing execution systems as well. So we've already pre-built a bunch of adapters that um, are ready for you. We use our unique technology, which is our visual interface configurator, which is an out of the box tool that allows you to do mapping of information to and from your various other business systems. We have several certified processes for ERP and one of those being SAP, one of our big ones. We have a bunch of different interfaces currently in existence and we have the certified solutions that are available to us so you can kind of plug and play these these interfaces but at the same time you have the tools to be able to modify those as things change within your ecosystem so looking at our visual interface configuration and looking at some of those integrations that we see on a regular basis we understand that lots of our customers have ERPs, MESs, and, and many other typical systems that need to have information provided or seen from uh, other areas within the business. So in the middle here, we have our visual interface configurator where we can start to take in information through XML, text files, SQL, ODBC, and then be able to transform that information into the various other systems that would be required. So in most cases, we're looking at our Dell Me or Thames as being a recipient of information from ERP, like our bill of materials and our routings, which would be key to um, helping us to schedule and plan ahead. And then, of course, interfacing with ERP and MES and our other tools. Now, these lines are drawn here, but the lines could be going really any which way, depending on what you've chosen to be your parent versus child systems or your more authoritative system versus your less authoritative system. So these lines can be drawn really in any way, it just depends on your business opportunities. From our solutions, we have a, a very good context with um, SAP. So we're allowing our SAP customers to go through and um, get to more finite capacity scheduling by looking at the various production constraints that are really happening on the, on the floor, which are not a part of your ERP system necessarily. You don't, you don't have vision of those particular issues or constraints that are happening. We have um, several paths here. So we have two going on where we can talk about um, SAP and the ability to look at our two different types of adapters here. And we've been certified with SAP since 1997. And we've been across, if you are an SAP user, We've been across the various levels that SAP, is, SAP has been providing over the years. So where else would we add value then? 
So we're looking at things on a continuous grid. We have the detailed positioning of operations in time. So the ability to move and schedule and reschedule or sequence operations is going to be key, but that's based on more immediate feedback that is needed to do um, the best we can and optimize our, our shop floor. Also optimizing of our bill of materials in their various levels in one pass. So if you have semi-finished goods that lead up into a finished good, what would happen if something were to slip and we needed to move that semi-finished good? Would it automatically adjust or optimize the rest of that production that's linked to that bill material level? Also the multi-level synchronization, having that, that link between the various uh, either work orders or maybe even the various operations and other packages within allow us to now synchronize those and make sure that we're doing things in the right order. We can do things like dynamic management of setup and change over times. Being able to reduce those times can be dramatic in our, in our impact. What if scenarios and simulations? Another key thing to help us make decisions and make the right decision. And then also we have several optimization engines that allow us to do load leveling and our scheduling. And all of this is in a, a graphical, user-friendly, and a very collaborative tool. So let's look a little bit about the solution. So again, we have these three optimization engines. So one is our production scheduler. This is where we get into optimizing the true sequence of events happening on the shop floor. And how could we resequence these and schedule based on any kind of constraint that might pop up? If we have some uh, shortage of labor or if a machine were to go down, how could we schedule reschedule right now to get the best production and make sure we meet our customer demand? Then we have our synchronized resource planner, which allows us to bridge that gap between the various operations, work orders, and precedence orders, so that if one were to slip, then we were able to remanage or re-sequence um, the other operations accordingly. And then finally, we have our manufacturing planner. This is our more mid to longer term approach, where we start to look at more load leveling, um, but at finite capacity at this point, and also a lot of what if scenarios available to us here. So we go from where we have a short, shorter term approach to our mid to long term approach. And our core model and rollout gives us the ability to really look at things from a globalized um, perspective. So having plants feed up to our various planning levels and our various enterprise gives us the ability to really have the best vision. And we're, we're used in really all company sizes and really most any environment could utilize the tools that we provide. So let's talk about the solution itself. We like to look at things in terms of a day in the life and a, a kind of a process that's flowing through the system. What we're going to focus in on the lower half here, where we're talking, starting to talk more about finite scheduling and finite capacity. So how do we manage and how do we get the most, the best expected capacity and demand for ourselves? We ask ourselves questions, what to produce and in what quantity? So what we would do is we can anticipate the material constraints and things by netting information that comes through your ERP or MRP system. In this display, we're seeing the various demands and what we would have across our schedule. And then we can also see the graph that shows whether we're hitting our minimum stock levels or our target stock levels for each of these types of components. And this will also help us to identify if we're going to have a material shortage at any point in time. Also, what about evaluating bottlenecks? If we have a labor condition or constraint, how can we manage that? On the lower half of the screen, we see the red areas that are indicating that we have some shortages of skills or, or employees that can manage these various tasks. So what can we do to manage that then? Also evaluating um, areas like balancing our workload. How can we manage uh, our workload across various resources and across various work centers? So we ask ourselves the questions of when to produce and on which resource. Well, we're able to adjust our line scheduling capacity to improve our service rates. So in this particular case, on the lower half, we're starting to see that if we were able to run our machine 24 seven or 24 by 24, then we would be able to eliminate some bottlenecks here and some overages on our lines here, where we're starting to see the colors. But in addition to that, we also give you some alerts and some warnings that indicate whether you are producing towards your, your goals, your service rates, or whatever those goals and business um, opportunities might be. And here we're starting to see where we can get from infinite to finite capacity. The ability to look at our workload and understand where we might be over our capacity for various lines, but then being able to use our various engines 
to reduce that and level out our, our load here. Now we're at a finite capacity and we see that all of our work has been leveled and we don't have the situations where we're grossly over our capacity. What about finding the right balance of our business objectives? How do we use our engines to actually optimize um, our production? So here we have our very schedule, but then within our tool, we have out of the box criteria that we can utilize to build our business rules or business practices into the system. So depending on how we want the engine to run, we can give it criteria that say, we need to maximize our customer um, deliveries. We need to maximize our priorities. We need to do certain things um, as part of our business to tell the system how we want to do those scheduling and what's most important to us. So this is all out of the box functionality to help us do that. Also looking at multi-dimensional changeover and setup times. So here, if we start to look at the little areas between the operations and work orders, we can start to see where we have setup or changeover times and how we can calculate that by using parameters that you've fed the system to determine how long it takes you to change maybe a color or change a bottle size or something like that. And then we go through and optimize that accordingly, trying to move operations together so we don't have to do the changeovers. Okay, let's talk about analyze and, and simulate. So on here we have ask ourselves, what is the best plan to utilize or to incorporate into our, our system? And in this case, we're looking at a particular outage or maybe a stoppage or a breakdown. So in this case, we can see on the lower half of the screen where we have 024 in the yellow here, which indicates that a machine has gone down. So it's we're using it zero hours out of 24. And up above, you start to see where we have that breakdown is recorded. So once we've recorded that breakdown, the system now knows to move everything over um, to the right here to adjust for that system, that system failure, that breakdown of equipment. And so the system will automatically adjust that while still respecting the criteria, maybe delivery dates, things like that, to move it and find the most uh, appropriate plan to execute on. Also, how do we determine the best solution to put into production? Well, here's where we talk about our various simulations and comparing our simulations. At any point in time, we can save off a simulation. We can make modifications to the system and save again. And then we have the opportunity to compare those simulations looking for the best fitted plan based on our KPIs now. So here we can start to look at the various areas that we feel are the most important to us and then incorporate that, that schedule into our system by actually posting and recording that. And now we're gonna use that as our go forward plan. So we give you some real concrete analysis here of which of these simulations might be the best to actually go into production with. So here's just a, a quick look at um, one of our displays and we're starting to see the various um, work orders and, and steps within our operations here. And we notice that we have green and orange um, operations here. The green indicates that we're actually advanced or we're on track for our schedule. And we can also see the, the green arrows here and the red arrows indicating our start and our end dates, which are proposed from our customers maybe. So now uh, if we want to reduce those delays that we're seeing in orange, we can actually run our optimization engine. And then we can produce no more delays by having that optimization engine tell us that we can actually move some things forward and get uh, remove those delays by potentially um, running our shop at 24 by seven. So how can we adjust our schedule based on our capacity and how can we maybe adjust our capacity to fit a schedule that makes more sense for us without any delays? So here's a quick video that shows some uh, shows us moving some information around and optimizing. So here we're using our synchronized resource planner and we're gonna show the various links between our operations. And then we have the ability to look at those links and maybe move operations based on a better start date that we might have or an end date. So now by moving that, the system will dynamically move the rest of the operations while trying to respect your business goals. Okay, and here's another video that demonstrates that demonstrates how we can insert that maintenance order. So in this case, we have a, a system down for maintenance. I, I was showing you earlier. And so here we're actually logging that a machine went down and we can see up above where that maintenance is recorded and how all the operations are pushed. And here we have an indicator of, or an alert that's saying that our service rate might be a little too low for us in this case. 
So what we'll do is we'll run our optimization or move some um, operations around to another usable machine that might have availability. And then we can go ahead and produce a different service rate, or we can use our engine here to automatically do this for us and get us to the best, um, best available service rates and best available KPIs that we're looking for. And one more to show us some identifying the bottlenecks of our capacity. So anything in red there is a capacity issue, but we are able to go through and level that capacity. And now you see down below where all the bars are now within our threshold and can be managed while we can still see the impact of our performance indicators. So let's talk a little bit about one of our customers here and we'll show you a brief video. The challenges we, we are facing in the automotive industry. Uh, first, flows are getting much more synchronized. We are delivering directly uh, our customer on the assembly line, and uh, this is one point. And we do it worldwide, uh, which makes things uh, more complex uh, in some cases. The strategic goals uh, we are facing today are the following. Uh, first, our customers are moving. The market is getting more segmented. Uh, we are managing much more reference with much more uh, specifications uh, on all our parts. On the other hand, uh, we need to get more visibility in our business. We need to, uh, to be able to uh, manage better uh, the forecast we are getting from our customer. The need wa was clear for us because we were having uh, different tools in each of our plants. Uh, the main one being Excel and a different one in each of the plants. So we wanted to get a standard solution, uh, user-friendly uh, and clearly real-time uh, in order to uh, better manage and anticipate our production planning. Our Times Delmia was clearly answering to all our requirements. We have one single loop of calculation, uh, which makes things much more faster. Uh, we are able to get a much longer horizon in terms of production planning. We have been able to improve our customer service level. We are over on 98.5% at group level, but we have some plants that are at 100%. Uh, at the same time, we have been able to reduce our inventory level. We are at eight days, uh, which is quite a good performance. Uh, and last but not least, we have been able to uh, improve our supplier service level being over 90%. In terms of organization, uh, first, it develops the teamwork uh, we have been able to improve the communication in between logistic people and production. We have one single information that is shared among all departments, uh, which was not the case before. And clearly we have been able to reduce the workload of our planners. And right now they are much more focused on uh, long-term capacity and long-term planning. So what, what made this deployment uh, so fast? First, we, we had uh, a very good teamwork with uh, our team's teams regarding the deployment methodology. Uh, they came with something that was uh, answering our needs uh, with a five to six weeks uh, deployment for each site. And uh, so this was on, on the our team side. And on our side, we have been able to anticipate uh, some action plans for some of the plants working on the master database uh, bombs, routings, and uh, stock accuracy. Okay, thank you. So that was one of our good customers here as an ambassador and how they've been able to use the system to their benefit. So of course, everybody's interested in ROI. So we wanted to identify some of the areas of uh, potential benefit of our customers. So what we've been seeing with our customers is that they were able to reduce a lot of their cycle time. Um, understanding that, that there's probably 90% of cycle time is really wait time. So the ability to compress that wait time helps them to obviously reduce the cycle times and get the products out the door much faster. Um, machine setup times can be reduced by consolidating and not having to change over as much or set up. 
Um, also other time savings in terms of just people time. How, how long does it take you to plan on a regular day? Or what? how long would it take you to do something if there was an expedite or machine broke down? Also a key thing is the reduction of inventory, the work and process inventory, as well as our you know semi-finished goods, et cetera. Being able to have the right parts at the right time uh, is critical for reducing inventory, but also for making sure that we can meet our schedule. We've seen other, other areas of opportunity here, like um, increasing our, uh, our planning and monitoring of our work orders. So the ability to have that, that real visualization of 100% of our work orders and see the, the full impact. Also customer service levels have increased because we have that information and now we, we understand how to deliver on time. And then of course some product, productivity increases as well that have been helping our customers by being able to do the scheduling much faster than they're able to produce as well faster. Okay, so that kind of completes the, the summary of Delmia Ortems. I'm gonna jump in here. So now we have, uh, you can contact us in, in Layla, but I wanted to also open it up for questions at this point. Patrick? Yes, uh, thank you, Moss. Great presentation. If you have questions, uh, please post them. We do have a few uh, questions and I'm gonna uh, take one of them now. Can Ortem schedule uh, take into account human resource uh, data and uh, feed that in? Uh, to a uh, an analysis for the uh, planning and scheduling. So uh, yes, a very yeah. Thank you, thanks. Yeah, very very common question and a very common um, issue that's going on. Yes, with our visual interface configurator, we have the ability to really interface any of our systems. So if you have an HR or a time timekeeping system, uh, we can very easily interface that into the system so that we know if we're going to be short of our uh, people, our resources today how in our morning meeting we might be able to adjust our schedule today based on that immediate feedback. Same thing can happen if, if a machine is, is starting to lose uh, efficiency through OEE. Maybe that would be a, a recording to us or some kind of interface that would tell us that, hey, this machine is going down in capacity. We need to readjust our schedule to get around that. So yes, that's a very common question. And yes, we interface with, with all types of systems that would help us to do that exact thing. A uh, question about how much integration with Microsoft Navvision, and what's what, what's the concerns with that? Oh sure, yeah. Actually, uh, we have a product that's related to interfacing with um, the great the uh, Microsoft Nav, um, all, as well as some of the other products, the Exapta, um, the AX product. So we already have uh, pre-built interfaces with those. Uh, two products, and they use one of our uh, a different product than what we're seeing here today, but very very similar. Um, uh, so our, our Planner One tool is used to interface with um, Nav and also AX. So we do have tools for that. Uh, someone had uh, a technical difficulty seeing the video. The question is, uh, how can I see the custom video Navaris? Uh, and I, I know the answer that's available on our YouTube uh, channel. Um, is that right? Yes, absolutely. There's lots of other videos as well of customer testimonials. Yes. Excellent. Uh, the, uh, there's a question about what's the difference between Ortems and Aprizo? Ah, very good. Yes, um, Aprizo is our manufacturing operations uh, management suite. So it's really the execution tool. Um, whereas Ortems is really the planning and scheduling. So they work very closely together, mostly hand in hand, uh, if that's what you, you need. So what would happen is we can go through and have Ortems do the finite scheduling based on the, the various capacities, optimization engines and rules and things like that. And then we, could, we would feed those new start dates based on this optimization into Aprizo for dispatching. So now Aprizo is gonna be doing more of the day-to-day -day shift to shift scheduling or dispatching, but it needs to know the bigger picture. It needs to understand when we need to start something to get it done on time, to get it to the, the customer on time. So through interfacing in our 3D experience platform, we have that ability to share that information, taking the, the new adjusted optimized start date, feeding that over to our execution. Now execution can now dispatch according to that, that optimized schedule. I hope that answers the question. 
Very good. Uh, another question um, came in related to uh, Prezo, uh, but also digital manufacturing. The question is, how does Ortem's interface between digital Delmia digital manufacturing and a Prezo MES? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, similar with the with the Prezo, how we can feed information back and forth. There's various tools within our digital manufacturing. So when we're planning, doing the, the process planning side of things, we are recording resources. So we're recording the people, we're recording the um, the tools that are needed. We're recording tack times as well. But these are all kind of theoretical tack times even when you're doing your, your initial process planning. Once we've taken that information, we can throw it over to Ortems. Ortems can now run its optimization and tell you that we really the tack time should be this and the tack and the the setup times and changeover times can be that um, according to our optimization parameters and then of course we feed that to execution but we can close that loop by feeding it back to digital manufacturing so now digital manufacturing has a much better understanding of what the true tack time should be based on our optimization algorithms so we really have this closed loop, fully integrated um, approach, just depending on where you do your planning and how you do it, where you do your execution, and even uh, how ERP plays into this, because ERP has a, a big factor in there too. If ERP is holding our, um, our routings and our operations, it might also need to be impacted so that when you run MRP, it's much smarter now. We, we can trust our MRP because we have a much closer view of the factory floor now. Very good. Another question came in about um, uh, Ortems uh, relating to uh, if you have or intend to have an instance of Ortems uh, and you're in Microsoft ERP and maybe switching over to SAP, um, would it make sense uh, if if you are also going to look into a Prezo MES, would it make sense to go with Ortems first and then a Prezo or vice versa? Or is there uh, a best in class uh, uh, process to do that? Yeah, that's a that's a very good question. Um, the interesting thing about Ortems is that it can actually stand alone. So it's it's a fully functional tool. Um, it uses interfaces to get a lot of the data in, but it can actually stand alone and it is an out of the box tool. So therefore, it's very easy to implement, very quick to implement. Um, we, we've taken customers with an Excel spreadsheet. We've thrown that information into Ortems and they're up and running with uh, literally within a week. Um, so that that's maybe the approach that I would take because you can get immediate benefit, immediate return. And, you know, scheduling is, is a big deal that you can save a lot of money with. So by using Ortems and getting that involved, then you can back into some of your execution as well. So and understanding how the interfaces might go, um, I would probably end up going with the Ortems first and then backing into the uh, MES system as well. And that also includes with ERP too. You could still take Ortems out of the box and then eventually interface it with a full system with ERP, with HR, or any other type of system. Uh, one final question, um, and we do have a lot of questions and ones we don't uh, answer here, we will uh, uh, be able to respond to you. Uh, and please uh, send send the, the email to Lyler, uh, the contact details are there. But one last question um, uh, is about inventory levels and lead times of purchase parts. Uh, how does uh, Ortems take into consideration and account those those functions? Yes, another good question. Yeah, all that kind of demand or the requirements will come through your ERP MRP. So we would we would build an interface with you, or if you're using SAP, it's automatic. Um, but all that demand and the requirements are usually coming from ERP. So any kind of sales order or forecasting is coming through. And we saw one of the screens earlier where we showed that demand, but also comes through those um, requirements for, for parts, for lead times and things. So we would interface that with Ortems. Ortems will now understand what your current levels are. It'll also understand what your mins and maxes are and even things like what's our economic order quantity, lead times, all these types of things, it'll take that into account. And we saw on some of the screens, we had the various colors. The deepest red meant that we had a stock out and we're not gonna be able to fulfill that stock out within our vendor's lead time. So we have, that's a critical stock out. 
where we had the, maybe the red, the, the lighter red colors, which mean that we could probably adjust some orders around, maybe move some start dates to still respond within the, the current inventory um, parts that we would have to, to manage those orders. So really through interfacing with your ERP system or whatever inventory management you might have, um, that's going to be the key to getting that into ORTEMS. And now ORTEMS can run its scheduling engines and optimization to give you the best fitted plan and, and be able to move things around based on if you, you might have any kind of shortages or any kind of lead time issues. I hope that helped and answered that question. Yes, thank you very much, Moss. A wonderful presentation and very good questions from our audience. Uh, this concludes today's webinar. Thank you for joining us. Have a uh, wonderful day. Thank you.